Hello and welcome to our webinar today. We are going to be talking about why, why not mobile, best practices for smashing mobile PPC ads. Today we've got Rupa Carpenter, an account manager at Hannibal Marketing. You can follow her on Twitter at Rupa Carpenter. Can you say hi? Hi everyone. Just to let you know that I'm not really active on Twitter, so you could definitely follow me, but um, there may be nothing to follow, so just to let you know. <laughs> and I'm Rachel Law. I'm an account manager here as well, and I'm a blogger at BBC Hero. So if you'd like to join the conversation today, just include the hashtag ThankPPC in your Twitter tweets, or you could use the webinar question box to send us questions. So our first live poll is how long have you been in PPC? Less than a year, one to three years, three to five, or five plus? We're rook rookies here, Rupa and I. We've uh, rookies. We're in this. <laughs> we're well seasoned veterans here. <laughs> we're in this A category, but we like to think we're knowledge wise in the B or C. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a, a fun little fact about us is that we actually started working at the at Hannafin at the same time, so we have definitely the same amount of expertise, but with a wide variety of industries. So. Yes. Let's see what the poll results are. Let's see, we've got mostly less than a year and one to three years. All right. But a pretty big percentage of five plus. Cool. So the next live poll question, how do you manage your account? Uh, a, I manage it myself. I'm part of a team that manages it. I outsource my account management or I'm rethinking how my account is managed. We manage many different accounts here. As account managers, since surprise, we're in, surprise. Since we're an agency, right? <laughs> but you all might not be in, a, in uh, agencies, so. So if you find that um, things are getting overwhelming, overwhelming, you could always reach out to, to Hannah Bin and let's see what we can do for you. See, so yeah, we got 52% I'm part of a team that manages it and 45% managing it themselves. All right, great. Cool. So this is the agenda for today. First, we're gonna go into why should we be interested in mobile advertising? We're gonna look at the hard numbers and some industry insights. We'll also go over some best practices, that's including ad copy, ad extensions, landing pages, and then we're gonna finish up talking about what's new with Google and our Hero Pro. So I kind of just wanna give you the, this is like the agenda, but the real purpose behind it is that, you know, we all know that mobile is pretty big right now in advertising, but still, even though we know that, uh, many of us are still not doing that. So the purpose here is to kind of give you the specific numbers, not to not just say it's big, but really to give you actual hard data, but then also to show with best practices how it's quite easy to get involved in mobile advertising, and then kind of talking about new features, things that can help you transition into mobile advertising. The real goal is really to give you that final nudge to actually try mobile advertising out if you're not already doing it. So why mobile? Well, like I said, it's all in the numbers. Mobile advertising is continuing to grow, although its rate of growth may be slowing down just a little bit there. So year over year, mobile experienced the most impression growth at 60% when you compare it to desktop and tablet, especially with desktop, you can see desktop only grew about 9%. So there's quite a significant difference there. And then global mobile ad spend increased 105% last year, and it's expected to grow another 75% this year. So although the rate of growth is slowing down, Although the rate of growth is slowing down, it's still quite a significant amount of money that's being put into advertising. You want to make sure that you're part of this as well. All right, guys, I, I, I hear that we have a little bit of technical difficulty that the slides are not uh, changing over. So just give it another, just give it a minute or so, and we're going to see about uh, fixing it so we can get the slides uh, back in place. So some other information, I can just talk about it. I don't have it on the slide 
itself, but some additional data here um, that I found uh, provided by AppFlood. So just if you're already advertising on mobile, uh, one of the things that you can do and play to kind of to your favor is to have an idea of when are the greatest number of impressions and the number of clicks. So we found out generally um, from the data provided by AppFlood that clicks happen around, um, happen to be at its highest around 6 p.m. So if you think about it, most people have a traditional work day. So it would make sense that on their way home, they're on their phone researching and doing whatnot. In terms of the weekends, uh, the number of clicks seem to rise between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. and also again between 5 and 7 p.m. And it seems that clicks were pretty decent through 1 p.m. and, and kind of dropped off in the, in the late evening hours. And then when you look at click-through rate though, the lowest click-through rate happened to be on Wednesday while the highest was on Friday and Saturday. Now this again, this is data provided kind of on a broad spectrum. Of course your industry might be a little bit more specific, but just kind of to give you an idea of if you're already advertising, this is something you may want to look in terms of optimizing. So folks, we still are having a little bit of technical difficulty. If you could just bear, uh, bear with us, um, we promise you it will be worth the wait on that. You're going to learn tons of little nuggets of wisdom about mobile PPC. So everyone, uh, we're going to just continue on with the presentation here. Um, this PowerPoint presentation will be available um, on PPC Heroes this weekend. So you will be able to see our slides. We promise you they're wonderful, amazing slides. You'll have to take our word for it right now. So moving on to why mobile? Well, besides the fact that we have the hard number, numbers backing it up, that's pretty much where you'll find them. And what do you mean by them? Them, I mean your visitors, your users, your customers. So I pulled some stats uh, from supermonitoring.com, and that reveals that, surprise, surprise, the majority of us have mobile phones in our lives. I know it's shocking, isn't it, Rachel? So shocking. So 91% of all people have a cell phone, and 56% own a smartphone. The more interesting fact here is that 50% of mobile phone users use mobile as their primary internet source. So that's, that's a huge fact, interesting fact. If you think about it, let's say you have 10,000 people. If you are not advertising on mobile, you are missing out on 5,000 people. That is huge. So that's something you definitely want to take into consideration. And another fun little fact that we have is that for e-commerce, 80% of consumers plan to conduct mobile e-commerce in the next 12 months, whether it's making the actual purchase or doing some other aspect uh, of the purchasing process, doing the research, um, that's a significant number of people there. So the next slide um, basically is a graphic again from Super Monitoring, and it talks about how um, it looked at uh, be users' behaviors and basically saw that 60% of 68% of people who use their smartphone, ultimately of all those people, only 35% ultimately purchased on a smartphone the majority of people actually ended up purchasing in-store or purchasing on a laptop. And I, the reason I put this slide in here is actually I found it very interesting because when you compare it to people who use their tablet or use their, uh, use their laptop or go in-store for research, the majority of those people ended up converting on where they did their research. So people who uh, research on their laptop converted on their laptop. People who search in store, research in-store ended up purchasing in-store. So I found it very interesting that smartphones were the only area where people converted elsewhere. So what does that mean? Does that mean that mobile is not is of no use because it's not resulting in the actual purchase? Absolutely not. Um, so if you so the next slide that we have here basically is uh, different pie charts of how how users interact uh, with our our sites and using their mobile phone. So a number of people use it for comparison shopping looking for coupons, searching product reviews, just trying to get any additional information, searching for a friend's review, and only 23% end up actually purchasing um, on their mobile instead of going in store. 
So, and I, you know, when I look at this chart, it reminds me a lot of kind of my behavioral uses. Like I'll definitely use my mobile phone for comparison shopping, searching for product reviews, but I will very rarely ever actually uh, make the purchase on my mobile phone. And so, um, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> and so one of the things you might want to consider, this is kind of looking at things at a broad, uh, at a broad level. Uh, industry specific might be a little bit different. Um, one thing you might want to think about, for, for example, if the product you offer might be a little sensitive, then you actually might find that more people will convert on, your, on the mobile phone. For example, Rachel and I remember, do you remember hearing about the one product that dealt with um, kind of growing your hair back? The men's hair, there was, yes. I think it was like a product for men's hair loss. And we actually found that in that account was that the more of the conversions were happening on the mobile phone. And our thought was that maybe it was such a sensitive thing or they were embarrassed. They didn't want to have that on the, the home desktop or the home laptop. So it's really specific um, to, to your industry. And I think Rachel's kind of going to get into uh, a couple tools that might help in getting more specific information uh, based on your industry. Yeah, there's definitely a, a sense of privacy searching on your tiny little phone screen rather than, you know, your laptop or your desktop. So, should you advertise on mobile? Well, it depends. When you're making the decision to advertise on mobile devices, it's important to think about your business and the industry. The buying cycle is very different for various products and services, so you should know what that looks like for your specific business. And, you know, like Rupa just mentioned, if, you know, if your product is a little bit sensitive, the way you advertise that is definitely going to be different. So how do you research this? So Google studied users around the globe to understand how smartphones impact the purchase journey. So this mobile in the purchase journey tool, I have the, the URL posted on the slide here, um, gives you some insight into your specific industry and they give you lots of options to select different metrics to generate graphs. And we've got some, uh, some screenshots here. So here are some examples of two, two graphs. And uh, on the side here, which you will see later, <laughs> are um, a lot of different metrics, like where do they research? Do they use an app or a browser to research? Are multiple screens used when researching? You know, there's there's tons of stuff here. You can break it down by country, products, and you can filter it. Um, the thing to note here is that there are a ton of metrics, and it's really easy to get kind of lost in here, just clicking different things and and not really having an end goal in mind. And some things, if you choose a specific metric, it might actually block off some other ones. It won't let you select them for whatever reason. I guess Google doesn't have data on it. But um, I would say definitely play around with this. But before you go into it, kind of having at least a little bit of background knowledge on your industry and um, knowing what you really want to get out of this will be really helpful. And so another thing with Google tool is our mobile planet. So here Google kind of did the same thing, researching users and their smartphones. Um, this isn't necessarily industry specific, but you can break it down by country, which would be useful if you are, you know, wanting to target mobile users in different countries, because in some instances they may behave differently. So here we've got frequency of search on smartphone and you the majority search daily, which, you know, given the facts that Rupa went over is not a huge surprise. Um, and actions taken after actually noticing the ads. So it looks like about 19% clicked on the ad, 13% looked for more information on the smartphone, and 14% looked for more info on a desktop, PC, tablet, or else. And then we've got some other metrics here, like made a purchase in store, things like that. So it's a kind of a neat little tool to use. I definitely think you should check it out. So as far as your specific account, um, you can use Google Analytics to kind of break down whether people are searching on mobile or desktop and you know what those conversions look like. So here I have a, a screenshot of a branded campaign in one of our client accounts 
broken down by mobile, desktop, and tablet. And mobile actually had a 32% lift in first interaction conversions as opposed to last interaction. So, so this tells us that people are, you know, first encountering uh, these ads when they convert on a mobile phone and then maybe converting elsewhere, you know, maybe they're searching on their mobile phone just to get some information before they decide, you know, maybe they heard about this brand from a friend and want to check it out before they decide to purchase. So this is definitely something to at least consider when you're kind of figuring out, piecing together your mobile strategy. So the big takeaway here is just to do your research. So once you figure out at what point in the buying cycle customers are using their mobile devices, you can ensure you're giving them the most appropriate messaging, offers, things like that. So you can, you know, further rope them in when you know they're going to be you know, say in the research phase on their mobile phones, you want to be sure you can interact them at the right points. And, you know, this is going to be different for your product industry. So just having a really firm grasp of your consumer base will be really important here. So we have a live poll. What is your most utilized mobile PPC tactic? Is it site links, ad copy, landing pages, call extensions, or all of the above? Rupa, what do you use? Um, I like definitely, I think pretty much all of them are, are essential, really. They kind of yeah. work hand in hand and complement each other. Um, I'd say my favorite would be the call extensions. Um, Super handy. But obviously it depends on, on the, the type of industry and the type of account that you have. I think landing pages are really yes, important, It's also too. very important as well. That can definitely ruin the experience that they click through and just have a mess yeah, of a time trying to bounce get right away. Absolutely. Hey, what do you know? Majority said all of the all of them. And then the next one after that was ad, ad copy, copy, which is also very important. And it's perfect timing for that because we're going to get right into best practices ad copy. So um, the quick tips on writing uh, the best type of mobile ad copy the key is to keep it short and sweet. So here, your headline should be keyword rich, but should be brief. And so when we mean brief, we're talking about four words or less. And if you think about it, what's the reasoning behind it? It's just that on mobile, you have less real estate when you compare it to a laptop or a desktop. Additionally, there might be potential formatting issues uh, from device to device. So maybe how your ad will look on an iPhone as opposed to a Droid can be very different. So when you keep it short, you can help minimize these potential effects. The next thing is to follow your keyword rich headline with the description of the benefits of your products or service. So think of what the user wants. So my, my main warning here is don't throw in the kitchen sink. I know it's a lot of times we like to put as much description in there and tell them as much as we can. I mean, when you think of mobile ad copy, think of it as this, like if you had five, 10 seconds to sell, to tell someone why you should, why they should use your product, you should be able to answer it. Most likely they're going to answer it with your top benefit. And so that's kind of the description that should go in there. In addition, just in terms of the look, kind of much like the headline, a shorter description on mobile phones just tend to look more attractive and, than using a lot of text. It's kind of like, I guess Rachel will talk about with the landing pages, things that are nice, organized, easy for uh, the user to read and to see will definitely go a long way here. And then lastly, it's very, very important to have an appropriate <coughs> call Call, can I say it again, call to action. So call now can definitely work wonders. I think if you just use call us, call today, any of those variations work very well. If you think about it, the users you're trying to, trying to attract are on a cell phone. So use that to your advantage. So you know when you're thinking of a, a call to action, use this as your opportunity to let them know what you want them to do. If you're able to have the call extension and to, to have the phone number there, use that. If it's something else that, that you'll find advantageous on mobile, use that as your call to action. But definitely take advantage of that. Speaking of calling, call yeah. extensions, yeah. best practices for ad extensions. We're going to go into these now. So for call extensions, use them if you can. You know, if that's something that's, that's valuable to your business, you definitely want to have a call extension because really, what users are looking for when they're browsing on their mobile phones is 
easy. They want it to be easy. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we recommend is just test showing just the call extension versus the call extension and the clickable URL link. So you can find this just in your uh, call extension settings. You can change it. I've got a little screenshot here to show you where it is. And what we found is that call only works well for if your business is, you know, local, like a, a plumber or for emergency services, something that you would want right away. Or if you value a phone call more than a site conversion or, you know, a form fill out, whatever. So, and you want to have both of them if um, you still value that call, but you also maybe want them to go to your site to do a little bit of research first, what have you. I definitely found for some of my clients that just having the phone number was more valuable for them. They just know that they can convert sales better over the phone um, rather than using some conversions on their website. So that's definitely something to, to think about. Right, and that definitely just goes back to knowing your business and what's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. So our next extension is location extensions. So if you have a brick and mortar store, mobile users might just be trying to find where you are. So having that location extension there, definitely, you know, if you're try trying to drive people to your store, it will make it super easy for them to just find where you are and get in your store and buy something. And so we see an average of a 10% increase in click-through rate with these location extensions. And that being said, if most of your traffic before were people just clicking on your ad to find your store, like going to your site and then finding your location, you might not see this, this big lift and click through rate. And another thing to note is that you can use these extensions together to really boost results. So in one case study, a hotel and resort used click-to-call extensions along with location extensions to boost mobile bookings by 20% and a 200% increase in mobile traffic. So these things can definitely work together to, to boost your performance on mobile devices because people are seeing like, oh, this is close to me and, you know, I have the, op the option to, to call right away, so. Site links. So mobile site links send users directly to the relevant page that they want to visit reducing the amount of browsing time that they have to spend on their mobile devices. So you can send them to best-selling products, etc. So we usually see a, a big boost in click-through rate with site links as well. Part of that is just because of the extra real estate that your ad will take up. So we recommend that you segment your existing site links by device to see which ones really boost your performance for desktop or mobile, and then you can segment those appropriately. So if you know, um, so one thing you can test is having the link text actually say mobile site so that users know what they're about, that they're about to land on a site that's mobile friendly and they know it won't look like garbage when you click on it. And if you know that their users are, you know, researching on their phones, having site links that are specifically geared toward those informational research pages might be good as well. And landing pages. So this should be a no-brainer, but don't send mobile traffic to a site that's meant to be viewed on a computer. You're just going to waste your money if you send people to a poorly laid out site because they're just going to bounce off right away. You want to be sure to have a clean navigation system, large buttons for big thumbs, and a call to action above the fold. And make sure that your page loads quickly too. So your site should really be visually appealing, visually appealing when viewed on a smartphone. So, you know, users don't want to see a big block of text and tiny little links on their mobile phone. Well, one of the things that you can actually do is if you don't have a mobile uh, landing page already, just go to your phone and type in uh, your website and kind of get an idea, see what it looks, and that'll kind of give you ideas on what you need to improve. Do you need to shorten the form? Do you need to move the contact button a little further up. Those are all, that's a really quick, easy way to see, kind of get an idea of what the user experience is like, really. Super quick. And if, uh, you know, you or your client don't have the resources to necessarily put together a really nice mobile optimized site, you can, there are sites online and re free resources that you can kind of put together a, a streamlined mobile version of your site. And, you know, 
it's not perfect, but it's better than having your regular desktop say. All right, so you know, Rachel went through uh, most of the, the best practices, and let's say you're all excited, you want to you get started on doing mobile ads, but you kind of want a shortcut. You don't want to start from the beginning, create your own ads. Well, this is one more best, best practice that, that you could do. You can look at performance of your existing ads in your account and use that as a starting point to see which one of those you can actually turn into a mobile preferred ad. So how do you go about doing that? Well, in, your, in the interface, you're going to go to your ads tab, and then you're going to go and segment your ads by device type. Now, this can be done in the interface itself, or you can download the, the ad report and then just include uh, the segmentation for device type and do this in Excel, throw it in the pivot table, because we here at Hannapin love pivot tables. You love them. Um, so it might be worthwhile if you have a ton of ad groups, a ton of ads, to just throw into the pivot table to see kind of what results are there. So after you segment your data, uh, you'll be able to see how the ads perform on desktop and tablet versus mobile, mobile because desktop and tablet, we can't separate out tablet, unfortunately, so you have to consider that as well. So um, on the slide here, I included an example of one of the ads uh, that was active in the account. And if you were to look at it, you would think that this was the best ad to opt into mobile preferred because, let's see here, the, well, the overall click-through rate for this ad was 1.19%. It actually, if you look at just computers, it actually did worse. It was 1.08%, but mobile devices was 1.48%. So great, right? This should be the mobile preferred ad, but is it really? Well, what I will caution you is not to make the wrong assumption. Uh, most of us do utilize optimized for clicks or optimized conversions, um, unless we're doing ad testing. If, you're, if you find that you're using one of those optimizations, you need to understand one thing here, it's very important, that when Google looks to make these optimizations, it looks at overall data. Dun, dun, dun. OMG, there's a wonderful baby here saying OMG, so you'll have to check it on the slide. So what does that mean? It means when a user is searching for, let's say, I don't know, let's say they're looking for pizza, Google does not optimize to show the best performing mobile ad. And likewise, Google won't, if someone is searching on their desktop, for pizza, it will not optimize to show the best performing desktop ad. It's going to look at the overall, uh, the ad that had the highest overall click through rate and say, okay, we'll show this for both. OMG. That's not what you want. Definitely not. So on the next slide, I have an example, again, showing the previous example, the one that had uh, an overall average click through rate of 1.19%. Again, it did very well for mobile, 1.48%. But what I would urge you guys to do is to look at the rest of the ad copy within your ad group, whether it's a deleted ad copy, a paused ad copy. And when you look at everything, and this is where you could do this in, in the pivot table or in the interface itself, you might find a different ad copy that might have a better click-through rate. So for this example, we actually found a deleted ad within the same ad group that overall had a click-through rate of 99, of 0.99. So obviously uh, the other ad overall had a better click-through rate. But the mobile devices had a 2.15% click-through rate. So if we had just gone with the original ad copy, at best, we would have been showing an average ad for mobile. But, but just taking those few extra steps, a few extra minutes, we actually found something that had a much better performance in terms of CTR. And you know, this is something definitely that I think that's worthwhile, and this is why I think we definitely consider this a best practice, is to really take into account all your ads and really separate it out and look at it, uh, look at it uh, by device. Don't always trust Google. Yes, I know. I'm so shocked to find that out. <laughs> so um, short and sweet, what you need to do, um, just kind of going through it again, is go through your ad copy, segment by device. Then you want to find your best ad based on mobile click-through rate, whether it's uh, active, paused, or deleted. And then you want to find your best ad based on desktop and tablet click-through rate. If these happen to be the same ad, then great. There's no need to create a mobile preferred ad because it's showing on all devices. And if you have the optimized uh, for clicks or conversions, it will show the right ad. However, if these are two different ads, then the ad with the best mobile click-through rate should be turned into a mobile preferred ad. And that's very simple to do. You just go to edit your ad copy and then just check the mobile box for that. Lastly, you want to pause all other ads. So you only have your best mobile ad showing as mobile preferred and your best desktop tablet ad showing uh, for all devices. So in essence, by doing this, you're not only going to um, be showing the ad that has the best uh, mobile click-through rate, 
but overall, you're going to be, you should be increasing the click-through rate um, for your over, overall performance. So it's really kind of like getting two birds with one stone, which I think is super cool. We're all about efficiency here at Hanvin. Absolutely. So that's kind of like the, the best practices portion of, of the presentation. We're going to move on to what's new. So first we're going to start off with Google. So Google has some new app ads updates. Uh, specifically, they, um, they announced that they have a new mobile app promotion features, and it's gonna be a launch, it's gonna be launched across search ads, display, the display network, and YouTube. Uh, basically, Google's gonna be pulling information from Google Play uh, uh, to look at how consumers interact with apps, and then they'll provide keyword suggestions to, to advertisers uh, to gain um, an increased uh, number of app installations. So the way I'm kind of seeing it is, is we, you know how we have the keyword tool for, for the search side, for the display side. I think this might be for the mobile app side, really. Um, what this will do is that this information will allow advertisers to target users based on their behavior. So for example, the types of apps they use, the frequency of use, and in-app purchases. So I kind of liken this to like the interest categories uh, on the display side. So that kind of seems like what uh, Google's trying to do for mobile apps. Um, additionally, Google also said that more than 80% of apps are used once and then deleted. Um, I definitely fall into that category. So the, the new ad feature that they'll have will have deep app deep linking capabilities. And the purpose is to drive uh, searchers directly to pages and encourage uh, further engagement. So on the slide, there's an example of uh, one of the ad copies where you can already see that the app has been installed, but there's an extra button there that says open. And it's just, again, to get, the, to get users to interact a bit more with the app than just beyond downloading it, using it once, and then deleting it. And on to uh, another new feature here. It's our very own Hero Pro. Uh, we recently launched a new Hero Pro script. It's called the Mobile Ad Checker. So um, if your accounts are any, anything like what we have in our accounts where there's just tons of campaigns, ad groups and ads, and it would just be painstakingly, uh, how would you say? Horrible. It? Horrible, <laughs> that's a great word. Um, a word we can say over on, on, a, on a webinar um, to actually go through and see which mobile ads are actually running in which ad groups. So this script will take care of that. It will systematically search for all your ad groups to see if they're uh, running mobile ads. And this is also a great tool to use um, to help with, uh, to help uh, fix any mobile ad overwrites performed by Ad AdWords editor, which tends to happen every so often. Yes. Um, so when you get the slide, you'll see that we have the, the URL there, pro.ppchero.com slash tools slash scripts dash library. Uh, if you're interested in trying out these, uh, this script as well as some of the other cool scripts we have there, um, definitely go, go to that link and uh, sign up for a free trial. It's definitely so, worth it. Lots of cool tools. Absolutely. We definitely, we actually use this on a regular basis. So yes. we can definitely speak from experience with that. So if you need help with your PPC account and management, uh, we offer full-time PPC management where we handle the day-to-day -day stress for your account. We can do an audit where we review your account for optimizations. You can hire us for a retainer where we handle only specific needs within your account. Or if you spend 20K a month, you can get a free solutions blueprint where we take a look at your account and provide some analysis and consultation. So now we have our live Q&A. All right, so the first question is, how do you select the best existing ads? Is it through click-through rate? So click-through rate is definitely one way of looking about it, and it's the one way we discussed um, when I discussed when you want to see which is your best mobile ad, which is your best desktop ad. Um, another thing that we look at here at Hannapin, I know I use it, it's called impressions until conversions. And so it's kind of like a combination of your click-through rate and your conversion rate. And it's very simple to figure out. You just take the number of impressions that your ad gets and divide it by um, the number of conversions. And so we find that to be an effective way to really it's very, very determine the, uh, what's the best ad for us. But it, it depends on the metrics that you want to look at, really. Yeah. Like so many other things, the answer is it depends. Right. 
Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to, to bring up, there there is a, a link on some of these slides, a few links, and you guys will have access to this once these slides are actually uploaded to uh, PPC Hero. Do not fret. Well, another question that we have here is about writing the ad copy. Um, specifically, um, what, are, what are our thoughts on basically talking about we're the best company, or we're the number one so-and-so company for this, and using that in your ad copy uh, for mobile ads. Um, I'll go back to saying that I still think best practices is to talk about benefits. So if you were, think about it again, if you were to only have five, 10 seconds to explain to someone why they should go with you, if you were to say, well, we're the best, that's not gonna be as effective as saying, well, our product can now, can now be served on all types of devices, laptops, desktop, mobile. Something like that type of benefit, obviously shrunken down and made brief for, that, uh, for the description, is I think gonna be much more effective for users than just saying, we're number one, we're the best. However, if you do decide to go that route, I mean, I, I definitely think it's worth testing out. Just make sure you're backing up whatever you're saying on the landing page, because I think what will happen is if someone clicks on you because you say you're the best, when they get to the, your landing page, they're going to want to know why you are the best. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. So we have another question about landing pages. So on the landing page for a mobile ad where you're doing lead gen, is it best practice to only ask for phone or email? So here I think it, it depends on which one would be more valuable to you. Uh, you know, if people are more likely to respond to you from a phone call or an email, Definitely pick the one that, that works best, but uh, definitely having less to fill out as opposed to having both listed on the form, I think will really help because, you know, when you're on your mobile phone, you don't want to have to type a lot with the tiny little keyboard and or big thumbs. I think also, uh, kind of like you were mentioning, if you find that if you call over the phone and you have a great conversion rate, that's something to consider. But then also if you get email, you have that contact information that can serve as an opportunity to remarket to them through email. So it's kind of like, look at, and then maybe seeing how that converts as well. So it's really, I think, kind of depending on your business, uh, which one might be best to, to do. And that's something maybe you can even just test. I would test it personally. That's what I would do. So uh, if I'm correct, uh, there is, uh, the question here is, is there any character limit for writing ad copy? It should be. Uh, uh, if I'm correct, it should be kind of what it is for writing it on, uh, if you're writing it for all devices, which is 25 characters for your headline, and each description line is 30, 35 characters each, so a total of 70. One thing to note, though, with your site links, um, the if you are using um, the enhanced, enhanced links. site links with the description lines, um, I don't think those show up on mobile devices. I'm pretty sure it just shows the link. I'm not completely sure, but that's just something to take note of. And, and another just important thing, you know, when you're thinking about mobile and mobile advertising. So if you're looking at performance by device for your campaigns, if you see that mobile isn't necessarily performing well, don't necessarily just opt out of it completely right away. You know, you want to see if, you know, maybe those mobile clicks and everything are at the top of the funnel and people are buying later on their desktop. So just something to keep in mind. One of the things you can do to kind of get an idea for that is um, on the interface, you can add an extra column for uh, assisted uh, click conversions, click, click assisted conversions, sorry. And so that might, so you might see for a specific word, a keyword, that mobile conversions are terrible, but then you find that the assisted uh, click conversions are much, much higher. And so there is gonna be some value to it because people are converting except just later on. And if you end up pausing that keyword, you might be killing that top of the funnel. So that's also something to keep in mind. So, um, so I think uh, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Um, we'd like to thank you for, for joining us and spending uh, the time with us. Sorry, we're very, very sorry about the technical difficulties that we had. We hope um, you were still able to follow along with us.
And again, please remember that the, the slides will be up on PPC Hero this weekend. So definitely check it out. So if you have more questions, um, remember you can always get a free solutions blueprint from our lovely, lovely team at Hannapin here. If you're spending more than 20K a month in AdWords, or contact us directly at marketing at hannapinmarketing.com. All right, have a great day, you guys. Bye.